Welcome to the John Gets Games tutorial for Cubitos. In this video, I'll be teaching you the rules to the game as we are playing it, and we are going to go through one full game today. Now, I would like to mention that the only reason this video is being made is because it won the monthly poll that is voted on by the Patreon supporters of the channel. Now, you can learn more about that by going to patreon.com slash johngetsgames, and I do hope that you would consider directly supporting the channel through that campaign if you enjoy videos just like this one. Uh, I'd also like to ask that if you end up enjoying this video, that you please click the like button for it down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Alright, let's jump into the game. Out here we have the game fully set up and ready to play for our three different players. Now before I start, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles. I might make mistakes as I am showing you the game, and those will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them. Well, let's start things off with a brief overview of the game. Now at its heart, this is a racing game, and out here in the middle of the table we have the track. Now this is called Nothing Goes Right, and on the back of this there is another map. In fact, the game comes with a couple other of these tracks that you can see over here that have a wide variety of different icons and abilities on them. Today we are using this one over here, and the game will end as soon as any one player has completed one full lap around the track. Now the game itself is split up into a number of rounds, and within each round, much of what we are going to be doing will happen simultaneously with our opponents. Now what we will all do is roll our dice, and we are going to keep rolling our dice until we either decide to stop or until we bust. When we bust, that means we don't actually get to use any of the faces on the dice that we rolled, and I'll explain how we bust later on, but you can certainly risk things trying to get more and more die faces. After that happens, we are going to use the effects on the die faces that we rolled in order to move around the track as well as gain buying power, and that buying power will let us purchase new dice that will go into our discard pile, and whenever we run out of dice in our draw area, we pull all the dice from our discard pile into our draw area, where we can then roll those dice as well. So as the game goes on, we are going to build a more complicated and varied set of dice in our pool by purchasing these out here, and as you can see, each of these dice have a variety of effects associated with them. In fact, the game comes with seven different effects for each of these different colored dice types, and you only use one out of the seven each time you play, so that will certainly vary how one game plays compared to the next. The next thing I'd like to point out is the fact that this track has a variety of different icons on it, and when you land on one of those, you then get the ability that is listed. And it is worth noting that this is the simplest track. Some of the other tracks have even more effects and abilities that might let you teleport around or activate jetpacks to go even faster than normal. The final thing I'd like to mention in the overview is the fan track up here. Every time you land on a flag out here on the board, you will go up once on that track, and every time you bust, which means you don't get to use the dice that you rolled in that round, you will still go up once on the fan track, and there are a variety of benefits on this track, like gaining credits, which you can use to buy more dice, as well as gaining these draw tokens, which permanently increase the number of dice that you can roll each round for the rest of the game. Now, there is obviously quite a bit going on in the game overall, and I'll talk about all of these things in detail as we bump into them, and at this point, I do think it's time to start playing the game. Now, for today's tutorial, we are going to be playing as the white player over here, and we can now start the first round by rolling dice. As you can see, each player has one of these tokens that explain the details of the two phases of the round. The first phase is the roll phase, and the second phase is the run phase. Now, this phase is going to happen simultaneously. We are all going to draw our dice, then we will roll them, and we will potentially re-roll them until we bust or stop, and once we have all busted or stopped, we can move on to the next phase. So, let's talk about the roll phase in more detail by focusing down over here. As you can see, our board is split up into four different areas, and at the start, we have these nine dice in the draw area. Now, during the draw phase, we are going to take dice from the draw area equal to our draw value, and at the start of the game, that is nine. So as you can see, that means we can take all nine of our dice, and we are going to put them into our rolling area, and this arrow shows you that the rolling area is actually on top of your player board. Now this means we are going to roll all nine of these dice, and if we had more dice left over over here, we would then use them later on in a future round, or potentially in this round, using some various abilities. Now in this case, we are just going to roll these nine, but we also have this die here. Now this is the starting player die, and it does not count as a die for the purpose of the draw amount that you can take. Each round, this is going to pass clockwise to the next player, so that means as the starting player, we effectively roll this one as a bonus. Well, speaking of rolling, it's now time for us to roll all of the dice that we have in our area, so let's see how we do. Now, as you can see, most of the dice that we rolled have a blank, and that is not too surprising. These light gray dice only have a single face on them. 
there's a one coin there and the rest are blank. And the dark gray ones have two faces on them with a foot and that coin over there, but then there are four blank sides. This larger first player die has stuff on three out of the six faces. So in this case, we rolled just two faces with icons on them. And now we can take all of the dice that show something and place them into our active area. Once this happens, we now have the decision whether we want to push or pass. Now, when you push, that means you simply re-roll all of the dice that were blank in the previous roll. And if we roll all of these dice and all of them are blank, then we will bust as long as we have at least three dice in our active area. As you can see, we just have two dice in our active area, so that means we are not at a risk of busting just yet, so there is no reason not to re-roll all of these dice. In this case, we only rolled one new face, so we can place that into our active area. And now we can once again decide if we want to push or not. Since we do have three dice in our active area, that means if we push and then all of these dice are blank, that means we will bust and we cannot roll anymore. Now, if we decide to push and bust, then we will lose access to that four buying power, which is certainly not something that I'd like to have happen. Now, that being said, this is a bunch of dice, and even though most of these just have a hit on one of their faces, two of these have a hit on two of their faces, so there is an argument to be made for pushing our luck a little bit. You know what? Let's try our luck one more time, and it looks like we got one more face. This one flew off the camera, but it was a blank. So we can add this over here, and I think that was a little bit risky. Let's now pass. Now, when you pass, you simply flip this board over to show that you are ready for the run phase. And once all of the players have flipped over their player aid to the run phase, we can then start that phase. So that means we have to wait until all of our opponents are ready. All right, it looks like we are all done, and nobody busted in this first round of the game. This means we can now move into the run phase, and technically this can happen in player order. We are the starting player because we have this uh, starting player die right here, but realistically this can usually be done simultaneously when playing with other players, but for this tutorial I will be showing it in player order. Well, we get to start, and as you can see, the first part of the run phase is step four for the overall round. The first three steps were part of the roll phase. Now, in step four, we are going to use any abilities that show up on the dice that are in our active area. Those abilities can come into play when you see special faces like that one there, but obviously at this point we don't have any of those abilities on these dice. Now the next thing that we do is we resolve our swords. Now swords only show up on the red dice, and I will talk about the details of how swords work once at least one player has purchased a red die. Now that means we can move on to the last part of step 4, which says we determine our total number of buying power as well as feet. In this case, we don't have any feet showing up, and we do have five buying power, and we can now move into the step five where we can move. Now, in this step, we are going to spend our feet to move our racer out on the track, but as you can see, we don't have any feet. But that being said, we can also spend four buying power to gain a foot as many times as we want. So with this five buying power, we could technically move forward once, but I think we want to save our buying power for purchasing dice, so we are not going to move at all in this first round. That means we can move it into the sixth step where we can buy new dice. And the way this works is we can purchase up to two different dice and they do have to be different colors if we purchase two dice. In order to do this, we have to glance over here where you can see there are eight different colored dice that we can purchase. Now on each of the cards which detail their effects, there's also a price in the top corner. And I have organized these from lowest price all the way up to highest price. Uh, that Dancing Dino costs 12 buying power, whereas the Bench Warmer down here just costs two. Now, again, we can purchase up to two dice. So with our five buying power, we could buy a bench warmer and a Muggles because that would be three plus two or five. But I think what we actually want to do is purchase this up to 11 green die here. As you can see, that does cost five buying power. So we can spend all five of our buying power to purchase this die. Now, there is an effect on here. As you can see, there are actually two different areas. The top one says active, and that means while you have this shield side showing up on this die in your active area of your board, you can use this ability. Now this says if you push, you may first take this die from the active area and then roll it with the rest of the dice. Now what that means is, as you can see, this die has three faces and three blanks. So by adding this back into the dice that are rolled, you have a 50-50 chance of rolling a face, which means you are not going to bust. So that means having this die will make us a little bit more resilient against busting. Now there is one more box on the card, and as you can see, it shows a face with the dots around the outside. 
Now on some of the dice, they have a regular face and then they have a special face with these dots. And if you roll that specific face, then both of these are going to come into effect. Now that means we have a one in six chance of performing this. And that says that during the run phase of the round, this doubles all of your swords. Once again, swords show up on the red dice. In this game, that is the El Bandito. So by having this, we have a one in six chance of making any swords that we roll even better. So we are now quite incentivized to try and get six buying power together in order to buy at least one of these red dice in the future. So let's come back over here and all of the new dice that we purchase go directly into our discard pile. And now that we are done purchasing, the final thing that we do is the discard step of our turn. Now the way this works is we take all of the dice from our active area and we push those into our discard, but we do not touch any of these dice over in the roll area. These are going to stay out there and we are going to roll them again on our next turn. So that means unless something else affects these from a dice ability or something like that, these will stay out here until you roll a face on each of those dice. Now at this point we are done with our run phase, so we can flip back over to the roll phase. And it's now time for blue to go. Now, as you can see, they have three buying power and one foot and currently no abilities. So they can go to the move phase and they are going to use their one foot to move. With that in mind, we can focus out on the track. And as you can see, this is a start and a finish line. Now, all of these racers are effectively on the same large spot and you have to follow these arrows. So that means that the blue player can move onto any of these spots, but they cannot move onto the water. You are only allowed to move onto water spaces if you have a dice that gives you that ability. And in this game, the blue dice are undercover fish, and they have an ability that says you gain two feet, and these feet may be used to enter water spaces. Now, this is an expensive die. It does cost nine power, but it's good to know that there is the ability to move through water later on in the game if you're able to get some blue dice. So blue has four options, and they are going to move over here. Now, after you move, you then gain any benefits from any icons on the final spot that you move onto, but you do not get any benefits for anything that you move through on your turn. So they're going to go over here, and that is going to give them two credits. As you can see, we have value five and one credit tokens. So blue is going to take two of these, and they can place these in front of them. Now, in general, a good way to track whether or not you have used a die is by flipping it in your active zone to a blank side, so they can do that to show that they have used that foot. Now, they have no more feet to use, so they can move on to the buy phase, and they currently have three purchasing power over here, but then they also have these two credits. Now, as I said before, whenever you have purchasing power with a circle, you either have to use it this round or you will lose it, but these credits, which are a square, can be saved from one round to the next. That means blue could just spend these three over here and wait until a future round to spend these in order to save up so that they can purchase an even more expensive and more powerful die. So realistically, they could buy a Muggles or they could buy a Muggles and a Benchwarmer by spending their two credits. And they've decided to hold onto their credits, so they're just going to buy one die, which is a Muggles. Now, as you can see, this die has four blanks on it. It also has one active face, and then this face shows a three buying power. Now, over here on the card, it says, now, this benefit happens. Now, that only happens when they specifically roll the dog face, and that means as soon as this is rolled, they activate that ability. This ability says they can take up to two dice from their draw area and roll those into the rest of the dice that they have, and you cannot bust with those dice. So this is effectively a way to roll more dice within a given round, and it also lets you go through your overall set of dice quicker, giving you access to your more powerful dice more often. Now there is a second ability on the card and that says run, so that means it happens during the run phase of the round. And that says that they gain two circular buying power, which means they have to use it this round or lose it. After that, they have to lose this die and that is not optional. So that means whenever they roll the dog face, they get to roll two extra dice, they gain two buying power, but then this die goes back to the supply. However, there is this three purchase power side and whenever that is rolled, they do not lose the die, so this would stick around. So Muggles is a pretty good way to better utilize their dice that they already have, as well as to try and increase their overall purchase power. Blue is done purchasing, so they can slide all of this over. And now we can see that yellow has four purchase power and no feet, so they are going to go right to the buying phase. Now, once again, you cannot buy two of the same value die, so they would not be able to pick up a couple of bench warmers. And they've decided to buy just one die, and that is going to be a catastrophe. This has a purchase power of four, so they are allowed to buy it. And as you can see, it has three blanks, two feet, and then one cat face. Now, when you roll a foot, that just lets you move forward on the racetrack once. 
And when they roll a cat face with the cat catastrophe card, that says they can gain one die of value equal to or lower than their current fan value. Now that is tracked up here, and every time you bust, you move forward once on this track, but obviously no one has busted just yet, and there are other ways to go up this track as well. So that means when this cat face is rolled, they actually get to take extra dice, and the power of those dice will go up as they go up this fan track. So that means if they bust, it's probably less painful for them, considering that will make their white die even more powerful. Now they only have a 1 in 6 chance of rolling that cat side, and a 1 in 3 chance of rolling a foot, and you do win the game by completing the race first, so getting feet is always a good thing. Alright, they are done purchasing, and now they are done with their run phase. Now that our tokens are all back to the roll phase, that means the round is over, and the final thing that happens is the starting player die is going to be moved into the roll zone of the next player in clockwise order. So that will go over there, and now we can start the next roll phase of the game. Now for this video, I'll just be showing our roll phase, and then we'll see the results of everyone else's roll phase once we are done. Now as you can see, we have no dice in our draw pile, and we currently have 7 dice in our roll area, and we have to roll up to 9. Now over here it says if you have no more dice, you then take all of the dice from your discard pile and move those into your draw area, and now we can continue to draw up. Now we can take two more dice, so I think we should certainly take this green die there because that makes us more resilient to busting, and then let's take another one of these gray dice. Alright, those are all of the dice that we have to roll this round, so let's see what we get. Well, right off the bat, this is a pretty good roll. We got a foot on the green die, which is certainly a good thing, although I was slightly preferring to get one of these shield faces to make us uh, more confident to continue to push. But either way, we have a foot, and then we have three buying power showing up. Since we have at least three dice over here, that does mean if we roll these and get all blanks, we will bust. So I think let's just stop right here. I think this is going to be good enough for us. That means we can flip this over. And at this point, it looks like we are all done rolling. And once again, nobody busted. So that means the blue player can now do the run phase first. And once again, I would like to say that the run phase can usually be done simultaneously with all of the players. So this looks a little bit slower on a video than it would when playing with other people. Now, they are going to start by checking to see if they have any abilities, and they don't. So now they are going to add up their coins and their feet. They have four buying power as well as two more credits if they want to spend those and one foot. So now they can move. And when they move, they can go forward or backwards. So if they want to, they could go back to the start finish area and then plan to go over there later on. Or they could just keep working down over here. Now, if they land on this spot, they can lose one of their dice from their roll area permanently. So they could use that to get rid of one of their less powerful light gray dice. And they think that is a fine thing to work towards, so they're just going to move over there. After that, they can purchase, and they have four buying power from their dice, and they also have two credits from the previous round. Now, they've decided to spend all of this to get themselves to six buying power, because that will let them take an El Bandito red die. Now, as you can see, there are two faces on it, and then four blanks. And when you roll the side with the swords and the dots, then that says that that actually counts as two swords. So that means this counts as two swords, whereas this side without the dots counts as one. Now, at the start of each run phase, each player is going to compare the number of swords that they have rolled. Once again, swords only show up on the red dice, and after that comparison happens, each player will gain one credit token for each other player that has less swords rolled than they do. Now, at the moment, this is the only red die out there, so that means as long as blue rolls one sword with this die, they will have more swords than both of their opponents, which means that would give them two credits, which, of course, they can save from one round to the next. That is quite powerful, so I think the rest of us should probably try to get these sooner rather than later, but, of course, getting up to six buying power is not the easiest thing to do in the world. All right, they are done purchasing, so that has finished their run phase. And now the yellow player can go. It appears they stopped with just two buying power, but they do have two feet. They did not roll the cat face on that die. If they had, then now would be a time to use abilities, but again, they rolled a foot. So they can now move up to two times. And instead of going a longer round, they've decided to go a shorter one, and they'll move two spaces over here. Now you may have noticed that there is this line showing up on the track. And this is there to show the quickest way to actually go around the track and, of course, win the game by being the first person to cross this finish line. So the farther away you are from this line, the more spaces you're going to have to move. But, of course, there are a lot more bonuses around the outside, which you can use to get more powerful dice to then make up for the fact that you are maybe going a little bit slower. So Yellow has decided to follow the fast track for the moment. 
and now they have two buying power, and they've decided they are going to use it to purchase a bench warmer. That means they can take one of these dice, and they have four blanks and then two active sides. Now, one of these active sides does have the dots, but as you can see, this card does not show any special abilities for those dots, so this side is effectively the same as that one there in this play. There are obviously other orange cards that do give extra benefits for the dots, but we're not seeing those today. Now, this effect says during the run phase, if they have a face showing up, they lose this die back to the supply, and they also lose another die from their roll area, so the bench warmers can be used to knock out the weaker dice from your pool. So that bench warmer will go into their discard pile, and yellow is done, and that means we can now run. We do have one foot, so let's move once. And I think let's go with the slower route, because going onto this spot to get two credits seems quite powerful. Now it is worth noting that if the blue player was still there and we went there as well, that is something that we would be allowed to do, and we would still get the benefit that is printed underneath. There is no penalty or bonus for being first or last going onto the same specific spot. Obviously blue is actually over there, and we can take two credits. And now we can purchase one or two dice. We have three buying power, and we could add these two to get up to five buying power. That would let us purchase another one of these up to 11 green dice, but I think it's probably going to be more important for us to save up for one of those El Bandito red dice to start rolling swords of our own to counteract the power that the blue player has with that one die. So let's hold on to these, but then we should spend these three over here to purchase a Muggles. If we were able to roll a three buying power, that could certainly help us when trying to purchase something expensive like the red El Bandito dice. And of course, if we roll the dog face, then that is a couple of coins and it would let us roll some more dice. So this just seems like a good one to have in our pool. All right, that'll go to the discard pile and that has finished our turn and we can now flip this over. We can now start the next round and pass the starting player die to the next player in clockwise order. And now we all get to roll. So we have to draw, and just like the previous two rounds, we have a value of 9. Now it is worth noting that we can pick up these plus 1 draw tokens by going up on the fan track, and that would permanently increase our draw amount. If we had one of these, we would roll 10, and we can also roll more dice depending on how far behind we are from the person who is currently winning the race. The way we figure this out is by using these red lines that you might have noticed that are over here on the track. Now, for every one of these red lines that are between you and the leader, you roll one more die. That means if the yellow player was right over there, there would be a red line between us and them, and we'd roll an extra die. And if the yellow player was all the way up there, we would roll one, two, three extra dice. So we would roll more dice than them, but obviously we would be behind them. So this is a little bit of a catch-up mechanic, but in my experience, being in the lead is always better than rolling more dice. Now, at this moment, there are no red lines between us and the leader, who is yellow, so we don't roll any extra dice. So, we can gather nine up, and we have five in our pool already, so these two will go there, and we need two more. So we can shift these over, and I figure we may as well take our strongest dice to place over there, bringing us up to nine. All right, it's time to roll. So, this is our first roll, and we got a single foot. Uh, we obviously can push because we don't have three or more dice over here, and it's important to note that we might still bust if we have a die over here that's on the blank side because we used its ability as long as at any point we had three dice in our active area, we are then at risk to bust. Obviously, we have just one die over here, though, so we are fine. Wow, and that was a pretty good roll. We got a three on the muggles, we got a couple of feet, and another one there, and considering each of these dice have a one in six chance of rolling a face, I do not think that we should roll again. Uh, once again, if we had rolled a shield on this, we would be more tempted to push our luck, but we got a foot for the second time on that die, and getting feet is definitely not a bad thing. So, I think we are going to stop right here. Well, all of these are flipped over, but before we move on to the run phase, the blue player did bust. When they had these three over here, they rolled all of these dice, and they got blanks on every single one of them. And since at any point during that round, they had at least three dice over here, that does mean that they bust. Now, when you bust, you have to take all of the dice from your active area and put it into your discard pile, but then as a consolation prize, you can also take any dice that you want from the roll area and also put those into the discard pile. In this case, they figure they may as well grab these four light gray dice and put them into the discard pile as well. Now, the next thing that happens when you bust is you're going to gain one fan point, and that is tracked up here. 
Now, this is the blue player's first fan point, so they go from zero up to one, and there is no benefit for going onto the one space. Once they go to the second fan spot, that will immediately give you one of these credit tokens that you can hold, and once you are on the third spot, that will give you one of these plus one draw tokens that you will keep for the rest of the game. So as you can see, as you bust, you will get more and more benefits, and you can also go up on this fan track based off of certain dice abilities and by landing on the red flag spots out on the board. So for the moment, blue is over here, and if they bust again, well, at least in that case, they will get a credit. All right, let's perform the run phase, and yellow gets to go first. Now, the first thing that they do is use abilities, and they do have two abilities showing up. The first one they will activate will be the Catastrophe. And as you can see, they can gain one die of value equal to or lower than their current fan amount. At the moment, yellow has zero fans, so that means they can take a die of up to zero cost. Now, there are actually dice with a zero cost, and they are up here, and those are the same dice that we started with. At the beginning of the game, we all have seven of the light gray and two of the dark gray dice, and all of these have a cost of zero. Now, you are not allowed to purchase these during the buy phase, but through other abilities, you can acquire these. That means the yellow player with their fan value of zero could pick up one of these, and whenever you gain dice through abilities, those don't count towards the two that you can buy in the buy phase of the turn. Now, they are certainly not going to take a light gray die, but these dark gray dice do have two faces on them, which is not the worst thing in the world. Uh, they don't want to glut their pool up too much, but rolling feet and coins is not a bad thing. And they've decided they're going to go for it. They'll take one of these dark gray dice. It is worth noting that all of these abilities are optional, so they could have decided to not take anything from this Catastrophe face. Now, they're going to go for it, so this will go into their discard pile, and they can flip this over to show that they have used that ability, and now they can use their Bench Warmer. That says that they're going to lose that die and any one other die from any of their zones. So, this one will be lost, and they've decided to lose one of their Light Gray dice from their Roll Zone. That one can go back here with the rest of the starting dice, and then the Bench Warmer will go back to the Orange Die Supply. Next up, yellow can move, and they have one foot showing, which works out pretty well for them, considering they are one spot away from gaining a credit. So they will go there, and they will take this credit token. And now they can purchase. At the moment, they have one, two, three, four, five, and potentially six buying power. And they've decided to get into the El Bandito game as well, so they are going to spend this along with the other five in order to buy a red die. So they also have the ability to roll swords. All right, that has finished up their turn which means it's time for us to go, and we don't have any special abilities. We do have three feet and four buying power on these dice. So it's now time to move, and we could spend this four buying power to move again, but I think we should save this, so we can now move up to three times. Three move is pretty great for us because we can go one, two, three, and stop on this spot. Uh, we are allowed to move less than the number of feet that we rolled if we wanted to, but going here is great. Now that lets us lose one die from any of our zones, and I think let's get rid of one of these light gray dice. That's finished our move, and now we can buy, and we do have four plus a potential two or six buying power, so I think, just like the yellow player, let's spend these in order to buy our own El Bandito. That costs six, and we can put it over there, and at this point, all of us have at least one of these dice, so there is no guarantee that you'll get the benefit from it, but gaining those extra credits is still definitely a possibility based off of how these roll. All right, that has finished up our run phase, which means blue can go. Now, they busted, which means all of their active dice were put into their discard pile, but they are still allowed to perform the run phase, although realistically, the only thing that they could do is buy dice with credits that they have saved. At the moment, they don't have any credits to spend, so that means they'll skip right to the end of the run phase. That means this can flip over, and in fact, all of our tokens are flipped to the green side, so we can move on to the next round of the game, and this will be passed clockwise back over to us. We can start by drawing dice, and we get to take nine of them because there are no red lines between us and the leader. So there are three out here. We can add those three, so we have six. Then these will come over there, and we now have a decision to make. I think we should definitely add this red, which brings us to seven. But then for the eighth and ninth, we could potentially use these dark gray ones, which have a couple of faces on them. But I think it probably does make sense to put both of these out. I guess there was a decision there, but this felt like it was a pretty solid one. This could help us potentially with not busting, and this one is obviously potentially great at getting us some extra buying power. So let's roll all of these dice, and our first roll is going to give us a few things. Actually, we got swords, we have a foot, and we have the dog face, and that is muggles. 
Now that lets us immediately, right now, take two dice from our draw area and roll those into the pile. So let's go ahead and do that. Now we cannot bust with this extra roll, so we can add those in. And we did get a foot. And of course, this is also in that area. So that's pretty good overall for our first roll. Now, in addition to that, Muggles is going to give us two buying power. So right now we have three buying power, one sword, and two feet. Now we have to decide if we want to push. We have only rolled one of these light gray dice, which means if we stop right here, we're going to have to roll all of these in the next round. But then again, this is a pretty decent amount of stuff already. Three buying power is good. A couple of feet is also good. And the sword could potentially turn into one or two credits for us. So I think it's probably going to be best to hold with this here. So we can flip this over. And now when we look at the other areas, we can see that yellow actually busted. Now they can pull any of these dice into their discard if they want, and they will discard all three of these light gray dice. And then they will go up once on the fan track, which brings them to the first spot, which does not have any specific benefit. Now they do have this white die, which can occasionally give them extra dice based off of their fan level. So for them, that fan track bump is slightly better than the rest of us, at least until we potentially get our own catastrophe dice. All right, it's time for the run phase, and the first thing that we do is resolve abilities. This Muggles is going to give us two credits that we have to use this turn, and then we are going to lose the die. I'll put it down there to remind myself that we have those two credits for the moment, and that we will lose this at the end of our turn. After that, we have to resolve swords, and we can now check to see how many swords each player has. We have one. Blue has two because they rolled the face with the dots, and once again, when you roll the dots, that is worth two swords instead of the normal one. Up here, the yellow player has zero swords because they busted, and now each of us is going to gain one credit for each player who has fewer swords than we do. Now there is just one player who has fewer than us, so we are going to gain one credit from our sword, and then the blue player has more swords than both of their opponents, so they are going to gain two credits because of that sword advantage. Well, it's now time to move, and we do have two feet. We also have three buying power, which means we don't have enough to buy another foot, even if we wanted to. With these two feet, we could go one, two to get us closer to the optimum racing line. But I think instead, let's go wide, bringing us onto this spot, because that will give us two more credits. From this point on, we could also continue to move around the outside if we want to. This spot would increase our position on the fan track, and there are many locations out here which let us lose our dice. So we can add two credits over there, which means we have three of them in the tokens, and then we do have three buying power. Now that means right now we could spend all of this to buy another El Bandito, but we could also save these for the future to try and purchase an even more expensive die. I think let's go for that. Right now we have one of these dice, which is I think good enough for this point in the game. Now we can buy something, and we have three buying power that we will lose at the end of this turn, so let's go ahead and use that. With this, we can pick up a Benchwarmer or a Muggles, and I think I like the idea of picking up a Muggles. This will go into our discard pile, and then of course, we had this one here, which is going to be lost because we did roll that face and use the ability. So the one that we had will go back into the supply. All right, that's finished our run phase, which means it's time for blue to go. They have already resolved their swords by getting these two credits, and they have one foot and three buying power this round. So they can use this foot to move right now. And with that, they could go over here, but they could also go backwards to that spot to pick up two more credits if they wanted. After considering it, they are going to go backwards, so that will give them two credits. And then after that, they can buy. They have four credits up here and three buying power, and they've decided to spend all of this, so that is seven buying power total, in order to buy a cheese boy. This is the yellow die for this game, and it does cost seven. And as you can see, it has two cheese faces and then four blanks. This one does have the dots around it, but the card that we have for this game does not actually utilize those, so this face as well as that one are functionally identical. Now during the run phase, if you have a cheese face showing, and if you have an active brown die, you gain two feet, and in addition to that, if you have an active orange die, you can lose one die in your roll zone. So that means the cheese boy does best when brown and orange dice have also rolled an activating face and are in the active zone. This means blue is likely going to continue to invest in brown and orange to best utilize this synergy. That will go over there, and that's finished their turn. Finally, the yellow player will not do anything in their run phase because they busted, and they don't have enough credits to buy anything if they wanted to. All right, it's time for the next round, and we can start by drawing. We already have seven dice over here, so that will be our eighth, and then we can pull one of these over for our ninth, 
and I think it's probably going to be best to utilize the El Bandito die, getting that out there as often as we can, even though this Muggles die is also pretty great for potentially getting that three buying power. Now this is what we are going to go with, and it looks like we've rolled our first shield, and this does have the dots around it. Now this is pretty great, considering those dots in the run phase double our sword value, and we rolled this sword, which has the dots around it, so this actually counts as a double sword. So this is a two sword, and then that is going to double our swords, bringing us to four. So these two alone get us four swords, and I think that is going to guarantee that we are going to have more swords than both of our opponents, in which case we can count on getting two extra credits. Now that being said, there is another benefit for this green shield, and that is that if we wanted to push, we could opt to put this over there and then roll all of this, and since half of the sides on this die show faces, that would make us much less likely to bust with that roll. Of course, if we did that, this could end up being a foot or something like that, and then we would not get the sword doubling, but even so, having two swords is very likely to be the most swords out of anybody in this round. This is a fun combo, but I think we just don't have enough stuff yet, so let's push our luck. That means we will utilize this to put it back into our uh, roll area, and then roll all of these, and it looks like it uh, rolled a shield again, and we got another one of these. The fact that we have another shield means we could roll this with those if we want to push our luck again. Right now, we have one, two buying power, plus three up there, which gets us to five, and this could potentially get us up to two more, which means we could buy up to a cheese boy that we've seen. And honestly, I think it's going to be risking it too much to place this back over there. I would hate to lose out on this stuff. So let's just leave this over there, and now we are done with our run phase. All right, we are ready for the run phase, and it is worth noting that there is a red line on the map between us and both of our opponents, which means we are farther along than they are. So both of them rolled an extra die, and over here, the blue player rolled a Mr. Muggles, which let them roll two more dice from their draw pile, which is how they're able to have so many dice in their active area on this turn. Well, they get to start things off, and they can use the Mr. Muggles ability, which is going to give them two buying power this turn. Now, after that, they also have a Cheese Boy ability, and remember, that says if they have an active brown, then they will get two feet, and there is a brown die in their active area, so this is worth two feet to them. If they also had an active orange in the active area, they would be able to lose a die, but they don't currently have any of those dice. Either way, when they go to count up their feet, they have one, two, three, four for the Cheese Boy, because they do have that active brown. Next up is time to resolve the swords. Blue has one. Yellow has none. They still haven't rolled one on this die. And we have two because we rolled the dots around the outside of this. It's once again worth remembering that this is only two swords when you're using El Bandito. With other cards, the dots might be worth something else, or they might be functionally identical to this side over here. But with El Bandito, this is worth two swords, so that means we have more than both of our opponents, so we are going to get two credits, and the blue player has more than one opponent, so they will get one credit. After that, it's time for them to move. As I said before, they have one, two, three, four feet, and they could also spend credits for another one, but they're happy with moving four times. Now, if they want, they can move just three times, and that would lose one of their dice, which means they could get rid of one of those weak light gray dice, or they could go their full move going to that location there. At the moment, they think going a little bit slower is going to be worth it, so they are going to lose a die from any of their zones, and they've decided to lose this light gray die here. All right, next up they can buy, and they have two buying power from Muggles. Then they have four more from this, so that brings them to six, plus that is seven, and this over here gets them all the way to eight. When we look at the more expensive dice, we can see that the next one above Cheese Boy is Undercover Fish, which costs nine, so Blue can't quite afford that this turn. They could buy another Cheese Boy if they wanted, but considering they already have one Cheese Boy and that is going to help them out when they have active brown and orange dice, they've decided to hold off on that, and instead they're going to buy a brown die, which is Muggles, which costs them three buying power, and then they will use five more buying power to purchase an up to 11. They could, of course, instead buy a bench warmer instead of the up to 11, but they think having that green die will be good. So they can take this, and they do have to spend 8 buying power for it, which means they will have to spend this credit up here. All right, that has finished out their turn, which means yellow can go. They have 2 feet and 4 buying power, so they can start by moving, and they're going to stick to the fastest line. After that, with their 4 buying power, they are going to invest in another Cat Catastrophe. 
Remember, when you roll the cat face, that lets you gain a die of a value up to your fan track level. But it's also worth noting that these white dice have two feet on them. So one third of the time they roll a foot. And this is a race game and getting consistent feet is a very good idea. So this will go into their discard pile and that has finished out their run phase. That means it's time for us to go and we don't have any feet, but we do have five, six, seven buying power. Now, honestly, in this moment, I think let's save all of these and try to hold onto those for an even more expensive die. And let's just spend two buying power right now to pick up a bench warmer, which will hopefully sooner rather than later get rid of one of our light gray dice. All right, that has finished our run phase. And we can now move into the next round. Now, as you can see, there is a single red line between the blue player and the leading player. So they are going to roll one more die but there is not one between these two, so that means we will roll the standard amount, and so will yellow. So that means we are rolling five dice, and we can add these three to it. That means we have to roll one more, and I think it's probably going to be best to keep trying to utilize our red El Bandido die to get more of these credits, and certainly try to deny those credits from our opponents as often as possible. All right, let's see how we do. Now that doesn't look great, however, I actually like the look of this roll. We got something on two of these light gray dice, which is kind of a hard thing to do, and since we only have two dice over here, we are protected from busting, so we should certainly keep pushing. Well, it's a good thing that we were protected from busting because we rolled blanks on all of these dice. If at any point in this round we had three dice in the active area, then we would have busted, but we are still protected, so let's go ahead and push again. Ah, that went quite differently. Let's put all of these over here, and that is a ton of buying power. We did not roll any swords, but I think there is no reason for us to roll again. I would hate to lose out on all of this buying power. So our roll phase is done, and we can look out here and see that no one has busted. This means the run phase can start with the yellow player, and I think the very first thing that we should all do is compare swords. Yellow has one, we have none, and the blue player has two from this, and then they also rolled the dots side of the shield, so that means they have two times two, or four swords, so they definitely have the most. That means blue is going to get two credits, and the yellow player is going to get one, because they have more swords than we do. And now they are going to move. They have two feet, and they've decided to use those to walk two spaces over here onto that flag, which is going to increase their position on the fan track by one. That will bring them to the two spot, and there is an immediate bonus of gaining one credit when they do that. And this is pretty great considering they have two of these catastrophes. And now when they roll this face, that will let them take a die up to value two, which would let them pick up a bench warmer, which would let them get rid of some of the dice that they don't like. So that cat face is significantly more powerful for them now, and that is a good thing considering they have two of those. Also, gaining one credit token is definitely a nice thing to have as well. After this, they will buy dice. They have a three buying power here and two credits, and they've decided to simply spend the three buying power in order to buy one Muggles. Now, after that, they can finish their run out by discarding their active dice, and that means it's time for us to go. In our active pool, we have eight buying power, and then we have five buying power up here, so we could potentially spend up to 13 buying power this round if we wanted to. With this in mind, we could purchase a dancing dino or an undercover fish, so let's certainly give these some consideration. Now we've already talked about the undercover fish, that gives you two feet when you roll one of these peace signs over there, and those feet may be used to enter water spaces, which is great. But even without the water space benefit, gaining two feet for one of those symbols is certainly excellent. Also, these dice have blanks on only half of their faces, so they are consistent at getting rewards, and getting two buying power is definitely not a bad thing either. Now up here, the dancing dino costs 12, and it only has a single non-blank face. Now in the run area, you can see that if you roll that, that is going to give you two feet. And then if you have an active red die, which is the one with the swords on it, that gives two more feet. And if you have an active orange die, that will give you another foot. That means if you roll this with the active red and the orange, that will turn into five feet overall. Now at the moment, we do have one red die, and we might potentially want to buy more as the game goes on, which would strengthen the effect of the Dancing Dino, but I think let's buy an Undercover Fish instead of going all the way up to 12 for that Dancing Dino. So that is going to cost us 9 buying power. And considering we have 8 over here, that does mean we have to spend one of our credits. 
Now we could buy another die if we wanted to, but we would be digging entirely into these credits and considering these are a great way at reaching up to buy very powerful dice, I think let's hold onto these and just purchase one die this round. Uh, obviously we skipped right past the move because we don't have any feet and at this point we are done with our turn. Next up, red can go, and they do have a cheese boy rolled again, and there is an active brown die. So that means the cheese boy is going to be worth two feet, and those are the only feet that they have. With those feet, they're going to move two spaces onto this spot where we are, and that is going to give them two credits. After that, they can buy dice. It appears they have three, four, five, six buying power here, and up to four more from these credits which means they could purchase their own undercover fish this round, but instead they've decided to spend three and two to buy a Muggles as well as a Bench Warmer. The reason for this is because those will make it much more likely that they get extra benefits out of their Cheese Boy die that they already have, and these are also just good dice to have around. Both of them will be lost whenever they are rolled their face, so buying them at this point when they don't have to spend credits feels like a pretty good turn for them. That does mean they're wasting one credit, but they're still fine with this. So that has finished their run phase. The round is over, so the starting player die will pass over to us, and now it's time to draw dice. Currently, there are no red lines between us and the leader, so we need nine dice. We have three over here already, so we can add four, which brings us to seven. And then we can add two more, and we should definitely add our undercover fish. And muggles, I think, will be better than the rest of these. All right, let's roll the dice and see how we do. I think one of these was actually supposed to be out there from that roll. I kind of splashed this one more than I meant to there. And now we can see that we got a few faces. These will go there. We got to the undercover fish, so that is two feet, and we could use those to go through water. And then we also got the reliever beaver, which will let us get rid of a die. So far, this is looking great, but I am tempted to push. This green die has a 50-50 chance of showing a symbol, so does the black die, and the red die has a 1 in 3 chance. So I think if we rolled these, odds would be good that we wouldn't bust, and I think we are going to try it. Well, I suppose I did have that coming. We rolled all blanks, which means this is a bust. I, I did think that was safe, and I probably shouldn't have risked it with all this good stuff over here, but I did, and that is going to bust us. So this will go into the discard pile. We can discard anything else that we want, and we'll discard these. And then we'll go up once on the fan track. It was probably not worth pushing there, but we're just going to have to deal with it. Well, at this point, our opponents are done rolling, and neither of them busted. So going into the run phase, we do get to go first. Even though we busted, we do have four credits that we could spend, but I think let's hold on to these for the future. Now, uh, the next thing that will happen is we can just jump over here to the blue player, and we do have to check the swords. Blue rolled this sword with the dots, so that is two, but then up here, so did the yellow player. So they each have two swords, which means each of them have more swords than one player, that being us, so each of these players will gain one credit. Next up we have the blue player, although I just realized they did roll a Muggles, which means immediately when they did that during the roll phase, they should have rolled two of these dice. I just missed that, so let's fix it by saying they would have rolled these two over here, and those would have been in their pool, and it doesn't look like that actually would have changed anything, that blank would have actually been out there in the roll area. Now when it comes to resolving these abilities, Muggles is going to give them two buying power, and Cheese Boy is going to give them two feet because there is an active brown die. They have a orange die over here, but it did not roll onto an active spot to use that part of the Cheese Boy ability. So they have two feet total, and they're going to use that to go onto this spot where there is a flag. That means they go up once on the fan track, and that will get them one more credit. Next up, they could purchase, and they have two credits from this, as well as four more, so that is six. And then they have six more over here, so they could spend up to 12. After some consideration, they've decided to spend nine, which means three of these are going to go away. And they're going to buy their own undercover fish. They could spend three more credits to pick up a Muggles or a Benchwarmer, but they've decided to hold on to these. So they are done with their run phase. This means yellow can go, and they do have a Catastrophe. That will get them one die of value up to the value of where they're at on the fan track, which is two. So they are going to use that to pick up a bench warmer, which does cost two. Next up, they have one foot, so they will move once. And they've decided they'll keep going the long way instead of going onto that spot. Lastly, they have two buying power here, plus a potential three. And they've decided to hold onto these. They're just going to buy a bench warmer. Now it's true they pick up two bench warmers as part of this run phase, but you only can't take two of the same when you buy them. Remember, one of these came from the catastrophe effect. So at this point, they are done with the run phase. 
that means we can move on to the next round, which means we can focus down here and roll again. Now we have nine dice that we can roll, and there are two out here. So we can add five, bringing us to seven. And now from these, I think, let's certainly add this. And then I'm tempted to add the Reliever Beaver instead of Muggles, because the sooner we activate this, the sooner we can get rid of one of these dice. And less dice we have, the more quickly we can cycle into our powerful dice. So yeah, let's leave this one over here. That brings us up actually only to eight. So I don't know what I was talking about. We can roll this one as well. So let's see how this goes. Right off the bat, we got our Reliever Beaver. We also got an Undercover Fish and this Shield. And I think let's go ahead and toss this back in. Now, because at any point during this round, we had three in the active area, that does mean that we are at a risk of busting, even if this goes over there and there are just two over here. So if all of these are blank, we will bust, but I feel very confident that's not going to happen with this roll. All right, we got another shield and a foot. So we could once again toss this back in over here to roll again if we want to. That would make us less likely to bust again. And you know what? I think I'm going to risk it, even though this did not work out for us well last round. Uh, it looks like, well, it's a good thing we tossed that shield in because that was the only thing that did not roll a blank. So we could once again push. And yeah, I am going to push my luck. All right, that was much better. We can add this over here. We now got two swords and we could add this back in and push again. But I think I am happy with what we have here. All right, it's time to run and nobody busted. Now we can start off by just checking over here to see how many swords people have. The yellow player has none, the blue player has none, and we have two, so we have more than everybody else, and we will get one credit for each of those players. So we can take two credits from the supply, and now the blue player can go, and they are going to start by resolving their abilities. Now they have a cheese boy, and they also have an active brown and an active orange. That means that this cheese boy right here is going to gain two feet from the active brown, and it is also going to remove one die from any of their zones because there is an active orange. So they can remove this die here, and they know that this is worth two feet. Uh, next up, they can use their reliever beaver to lose it in order to lose something from any of their zones, and they will lose this die there. Of course, the reliever beaver will also go away. After that, this undercover fish is going to give them two feet, and they can use those specific feet to go through water spaces. Now, at this point, they can just count up their feet. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, and again, two of these could go through water. Six moves is a bunch, though unfortunately, they don't have a way to effectively use those to go even faster through water. This map has some water on it, so that undercover fish is nice, while other maps have a lot of areas where being able to go through water could make you significantly faster. With these six movement, they could go around the outside more to try and hit some of these bonuses, but instead they've decided to go one, two, three, four, five, six to try and put some distance between them and their opponents. Next up, they have one, two, three, four buying power, plus potentially three more that they could spend, and they've decided to spend their four to pick up a catastrophe. Right now, they are at the second spot on the fan track, so that means if they roll this face, they could pick up a bench warmer. And remember, their cheese boy is better when there is an active orange die in their zone. So being able to use this to pick up more orange is good. And of course, blue might gain more flags and also might bust, which would make this face even more strong as the game went on. All right, they are done with the run phase, which means yellow can go. Now, I have once again forgotten to use the Muggles ability during the roll phase. Sorry, I've missed that twice in a row. Uh, because of that, let's just say that they would have rolled these two. They probably would have rolled the red, but we are already so deep into this round that we can fix it by just rolling these. So let's say that was over there, and we'll just stick with that. I'll try to be a little bit more careful about making sure to roll those extra dice when the Muggles are rolled. Now, Muggles at this point is going to give them two buying power, and they are going to lose the die at the end of the round, and they do have one foot. With that foot, they will go here, which will give them two more credits. That brings them up to five, and now they have five buying power here, plus two, which is seven, plus five more means they could spend up to 12. You know what? They can afford a dancing dino, and they've decided to go for it. They have one red die and two orange dice at the moment to potentially make this effect even better for them. That does mean they have to spend all five of their credits, and they also, of course, lose muggles when they activate them. At this point, they are done with their run phase, which means it's time for us to go. We have a couple of abilities here. We can use the Reliever Beaver to get rid of a die from any zone, and let's just get rid of this one. And then, of course, the Reliever Beaver will be returned to the supply. 
and then this undercover fish is going to be worth two feet to us. So that is two plus one or three feet there. And I think let's just use two of them to go onto this spot to gain a flag. That will tie us at the two spot with everybody else and that will get us one credit. Next up we can purchase and we don't have any buying power here, but we do have seven credits up here that we can spend. And I think let's just spend four of them and save three more for the future. And with these four, let's pick up our own catastrophe. All right, we are done with our run phase, which means the round is over. So we can move on to the next round of the game. And currently there is a red line between us and the blue player. And the same goes for the yellow player. So that means both us and yellow will roll one extra die this round. That means we get to roll 10 dice. We have three here and then there are five more coming in. So that is eight. That means we have to add two more from these. And I think we should always use the undercover fish because getting two feet is very powerful. And now between these two, I feel like maybe we should actually prioritize the Catastrophe instead of the El Bandito. Getting those credits is good, but getting feet is also good, and getting free dice is also a great result. All right, let's roll all of these. And it looks like we got a Muggles as well as an Undercover Fish, and we got a foot on that Catastrophe. Now, I am not going to forget to use the Muggles now. Once again, this lets us take two more dice and roll them. So we will take these two here, and we got blanks on both of them, but that's fine. Now this actually should be in there as well. And at this point, we could push if we wanted to. Now I do want to push, but I feel like this is already a pretty good turn for us. So let's just play it safe this round and be done with our roll phase. All right, everyone is done rolling and nobody busted. The blue player did roll many times. They got close to busting, but it didn't quite happen. The blue player did roll a Muggles and they did roll two extra dice, which is part of the reason why they have so many over here. Well, let's start things off by checking swords. We have none. The blue player has two because they rolled the side with the dots, and the yellow player has one. That means blue has more than two players, so they are going to gain two credits, and the yellow player has more than we do, so they are going to gain one credit. Next up, yellow can do their run phase, and when they check their abilities, they're going to start with the dancing dino. Now remember, that is always going to give them two feet, but then if they have an active red, they gain two more, and they do have an active red, so that is up to four feet. And then if they have an active orange, they gain one more foot. They actually have two active orange, so that means this dancing dinosaur is worth five feet to them. Now, in addition to that, they do have these two reliever beavers, and each of them will let them remove one die from any of their zones, and then the reliever beaver is also removed. Now, they're going to use each of these to get rid of a light gray die, so that means all four of these dice are removed from their area. Next up, they can count their feet and their buying power. They have three buying power here, and again, this dancing dino is worth five feet to them. Well, they can use those to move, and they've decided to try and get back onto the racing line by moving one, two, three, four, five, and they are now tied with the blue player. Next up, they have three plus one or four buying power total, and they've decided just to spend two in order to pick up a bench warmer. They like having at least one of these around to try and activate that bonus from the dancing dino, and they do still have some lower level dice that they would like to remove from their pool. All right, they are done with their run phase, which means we can go. Now we have an undercover fish here, and we do have a muggles. Muggles is going to give us two buying power, and this will give us two feet. That means we have three feet total and four buying power this round. Of course, we will have to lose muggles from this ability. Well, with three feet, I think let's go one, two, three onto that location, which lets us lose a die from any of our areas. In this case, let's get rid of a light gray die. And now we can buy, remembering that we have four buying power plus a potential three more, which could bring us up to seven. You know what? I think let's spend five to pick up another up to 11. That does mean we have to spend one of our credits. So this will go here, Muggles is gone, and that has finished out our run phase. So we can move on to the next round, and we are going to get the starting player die. So let's now draw our dice. Now there is one red line between us and the leading player, so that means we will roll 9 plus 1 or 10 dice. Currently we have 6 out here, so that brings us to 7. Then we can go 8, 9, 10. All right, let's roll all of these. Right off the bat, we did get a shield. We also got an undercover fish and a catastrophe. So that was a pretty good roll. I think let's toss this shield back in and roll all of these. And this time we got a foot, another buying power, and another shield. 
Now, we did not get anything on this red die, which is unfortunate, but at the moment, we do have three movement, which is significant, and I'm not sure if the benefits of tossing this in over there to reroll is going to be worth it. Let's just keep this now and go with the stuff that we have. All right, we are all done rolling, and there was once again no busting. I can tell you that the yellow player rolled probably like five times, but they stopped right over there. Now we can check swords first. The blue player has one, we have none, and the yellow player has none. That means blue has more than two of their opponents with that single sword, so they are going to gain two credits, and they have a bunch of these credits over here to spend. All right, we can start with the run phase, and we can begin by using abilities. This catastrophe lets us take a die of up to our fan level, and our fan level is currently at two, so let's use that in order to take a reliever beaver. Let's put that into our discard pile, then this undercover fish lets us move up to twice, and those can go through water. And we have another foot, so that is three feet total, and then four buying power, plus potentially two more. With these feet, we could go onto one of these spots to get a bonus, or we could just go one, two, three, and try to catch up with our opponents. I think in this moment, doing that is probably okay. If we were able to land on a more powerful spot, then maybe I would have gone over here, like something like that. We could, of course, work our way towards that, but I think for the moment, this is fine. If we get a bunch of feet together, it might make sense to jump out to some of these bonuses, or maybe we are going to stick to the racing line at this point. Next up, we can purchase, and we have four buying power plus two credits, which means we could spend up to six buying power. And I think in this moment, let's just take another Catastrophe, considering they have a one in three chance to roll a foot, and I do like that consistency. All right, that has finished up our run phase. That means blue can go. When it comes to their abilities, they did have a Muggles, which they did use. Uh, they also have a Cheese Boy, and the Cheese Boy will activate when there are brown and orange dice over here. There's a brown, and the brown die means Cheese Boy will get them two feet. This Undercover Fish will also give them two feet. Those actually let them move underwater, and they have a couple other feet over here. So that is two, three, four, five, six feet total. They also have a couple of buying power plus a bunch of credits up atop. I suppose this Muggles is also worth two credits, so they can buy some pretty expensive stuff, but first of all, they are going to move. Blue can move up to six times. They will go one, two, three, four, and then remember, they did roll an undercover fish, which means those two feet can go through water. With that in mind, they will go one, two, bringing them onto that spot, making this a little bit faster of a way to get around the track. Next up, they have one, two, three, four buying power, plus seven credits, which brings them up to 11 buying power total. And they've decided to use all of that to buy another undercover fish, which costs them nine, as well as a bench warmer, which costs them two, bringing them up to a total cost of 11. So these will go here. We can spend all of these credits, and they are now done with their run phase. Up here, yellow is next. And when it comes to abilities, they don't actually have any showing. They just have three feet and three buying power. With the three feet, they are simply going to follow the line going as quickly as they can. And then with their three buying power, they will add one credit, bringing them to four, letting them purchase their third Catastrophe die. All right, that has finished their run phase, which means the round is over. That means blue can take the starting player die, and it's time for us to draw some dice. As you can see, there are one, two red lines between us and the leader, so we will roll two extra die, and yellow will roll one extra die for that one red line between them. This means we can roll 11 dice total. We have four here, plus these two brings us to six, so that means we can take five of these. Now, I think we should certainly take the undercover fish as well as both of the catastrophes. We can take two more things, and let's go for a reliever beaver and one of these up to 11 green dice. All right, let's roll all of these. And that was not too exciting of a roll. We got a foot and a buying power. We just have two dice over here, so we are still protected. So we can roll these without worrying about busting. And this time we got another foot and another buying power. So now that there is at least three over here, at least once in the round, we are at a risk of busting. And I do think we should roll again. There's some really powerful dice in here that have not rolled us any of their good faces. All right, that is two swords, which is good. We also got a reliever beaver, and we got results on two gray dice. So I think we should probably stop. It's a bummer we didn't get anything from our undercover fish, but I think this is still a good time to stop. So let's flip this over. Well, when we look out here, both of our opponents actually busted. So that means these are all over there, and the blue player will discard those as well. That is going to bring them up to the third spot on this fan track. And the same thing happened up here for the yellow player. 
It seems both of the players were trying to get just a little bit more and missed. Now yellow is going to discard those two grays as well. And after that, blue and yellow will both advance once on the fan track. So that means each of them will gain a single credit, and both of them will also get one of these draw tokens, which means for the rest of the game, they will roll one more die than they did before. Well, it's time for the run phase, and both of our opponents busted, and they're not buying things with their credits, so we can just go right over to us. Now we have the most swords, because we're the only ones with swords, so that means we will gain a credit for each player who has less than us, so that is two. Now, after that, this Reliever Beaver will let us get rid of a die from any zone, and let's get rid of this one, and of course, the Reliever Beaver will also be lost. And now it looks like we have two feet, and four buying power here, plus four more credits. Well, I don't think it's worth going two spaces backwards just to lose another die, so let's move two more spaces forward. That means we don't cross that line, which means we're rolling another die next round, which is certainly a good thing. Next up, we have four buying power and four credits, and let's spend four buying power taking a Catastrophe, and let's go ahead and spend three of our credits right now to pick up a Muggles. I think having that around is going to be better than hoarding our credits at this point. All right, that has finished up our run phase. This means we can move into the next round of the game, and we are once again going to roll 9, 10, 11 dice, and we know that both of our opponents will roll one more than they did last round because they have that plus one draw token. Well, we have two dice over here, so we have to add nine more. These three mean we have to add six more from all of those. I think we should certainly add these two catastrophes, and then let's toss that one, this one, and this one in. And that brings us to 10. So for our 11th die, let's take this dark gray one. All right, let's see how we go. Well, that was a pretty good start. We got faces on all three catastrophes, although only one will get us a new die. And this is two swords, which I do like seeing. Now, I do think we should roll again. All three of these dice have a 50-50 chance of showing a face, and I think it's worth it to roll them. All right, hopefully we don't regret this. And it looks like we won't. That is three more feet, which is great. Now, this is the second round in a row where we cannot seem to get a face from our undercover fish. And I think it does not make sense to push our luck again. We've got five feet over here. So yeah, I think let's just stop now. All right, we are all done rolling, and there were no busts this round, so now let's check the swords. Yellow rolled one, blue rolled two because of those dots, and we also rolled two, so that means white and blue will both gain one more credit. I can place these over here, and it is interesting that at this point, none of us have invested in another red die so far. It might happen, but gaining credits at this point in the game is maybe less important than gaining dice that have feet on it, so we'll just have to see how that goes. It is worth noting that with different red cards, there are oftentimes big reasons to hoard these red dice. Many of them force you to lose your red dice every time you score for a majority. All right, it's time for the run phase, and yellow gets to go first. As you can see, they did roll their dancing dino again, and that is going to give them two feet, and they get two more feet if they have an active red, which they do. So that is four feet over there, plus one, two, three, four, five. So they actually have nine feet this round, in addition to having two plus one or three buying power total. With their nine feet, yellow has decided they're going to stick to the fastest path. So they will go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They are kind of wishing they had an undercover fish to be more efficient through this bend, but they're still happy with the distance they just got. After that, they are going to buy a single reliever beaver for their two buying power, and that's finished their run phase. Well, we are next, and we do have a catastrophe face. That means we can take a die of up to our fan level, which is currently two. So let's use that to take a reliever beaver. That is the only die that costs two at this point. Now, after that, we have no buying power here, but we do have two credits, and we do have five feet to use. So let's go ahead and move up to five times. At this point, I don't see a reason to veer off track. Let's stick with the fastest line over here. So that will be one, two, three, four, five. Next up, we could spend these credits to pick up another Reliever Beaver, but I think we should save those for the moment. So that has finished our run phase. After that, blue can go. As you can see, they have a Cheese Boy, and they do have an active orange. They don't have an active brown. Now, the Cheese Boy will let them remove one die from their roll area if they have at least one active orange. So they will use that ability to get rid of this light gray die. After that, they can use this Reliever Beaver to remove a die from any of their zones, so they'll get rid of that light gray die, and then they will lose the Reliever Beaver. 
Next up, we can see they have two of these undercover fish. So each of those will give them two feet, and that means they could go through up to four spots with water. And then they have another foot there, so they have five feet total. They also have just one buying power here, plus two credits, so they have up to three buying power total. Now they can start by moving, and they'll stick to the fastest line they can, and move one, two, three, four, five times, just barely putting themselves in the lead. After that, they are going to spend one credit along with this buying power to get them to two, which lets them take another bench warmer. All right, that has finished their run phase. This means we can move on to the next round and we get the starting player die. And there are also two red lines between us and the leader. So we are going to roll two extra dice and there is no line between yellow and blue. So they will get no bonuses from that. But again, both of our opponents roll one extra die from these tokens. This means we get to roll 11 dice. We have four here plus three brings us to seven. And now we can take four of these. Now, I think it's probably important to take all three of the catastrophes to try and get to those somewhat consistent feet. And then I think after that, let's just take an up to 11 to give us some resilience for being able to push longer. All right, let's roll all of these. And we got a catastrophe as well as an undercover fish and a couple of buying power. Now we can roll again, and I do think we should. All three of these dice have a 50-50 chance of showing a face, and this one is a one in three chance. So hopefully we don't regret this. And it looks like I lost control of my dice, and I do actually regret it. I scattered the dice all over the place and unfortunately rolled all blanks. I am pretty surprised by that outcome, but unfortunately that is what happened. That means we're gonna lose these. We can also discard these gray dice when we bust. We can flip this over, and then we can move forward. That will get us one credit as well as a plus one draw token. Although at this point in the game, I feel like it was probably much better to keep that roll than be able to roll more in the future, considering how far our opponents are ahead. That being said, we did not have that many feet when we busted. Realistically, we just had two, so pushing was the right call. It just did not work out well for us. Well, we are all done rolling, and when we check the swords, it looks like blue did not roll any, and yellow did roll one, so they have more than both of their opponents, which means they are going to gain two credits. After that, we would go, but we busted. We could technically spend our three credits to buy a die, but I think let's just hold on to these. This means it's time for the blue player to go, and they can start with their abilities. This undercover fish will give them two feet that can go through water, they also have a cheese boy and an active orange. That means the cheese boy will let them lose a die from their roll zone. Although right now they don't really feel like they want to. These are all pretty solid dice to have, so they are going to forego that ability. And they will use this reliever beaver though. That lets them remove a die from any of their zones. And they figure they'll get rid of one of these dark black dice, considering their light gray dice currently are doing something for them on this turn. Next up, they can count their feet. They have three, and two of them can go through water, and then we can see they have four plus one, or five buying power this turn. Well, with their feet, they can move three spaces closer towards the finish line. That would put them four spaces away, which is very close overall. But another thing they could do is move one, two, three across that water onto this spot here. That lets them gain any one die, so they could take one of the more powerful dice by landing on that spot. Of course, from here, they would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 away, or maybe 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 away if they're able to get another undercover fish activation. Whereas if they were to go to this spot here, they would be just 4 away. So the question is, is that extra foot away from the finish line worth gaining a die of their choice? After considering it, they are going to stay over here, and they will use that ability to take another undercover fish. These cost nine, which is a lot, and they have a one in three chance of rolling a double foot. And again, they could use that to go through this water, which means they would just be one, two, three, four, five spots away from getting to the finish line. So this will go here, and they do have four buying power there, plus potentially one more. And in this case, they've decided not to buy anything. They could, of course, have spent this four movement to get even closer to the end, but they would not have gained this die, and they think that the extra chance of getting more feet on that is going to be worth it to them. Perhaps this is a risk they shouldn't be taking, but it is what they're going to be going for, so that has finished out their run phase. And now it's time for yellow to go. They have a bench warmer, which lets them remove one of their dice from any of their zones, and they'll get rid of this one. They also have this Dancing Dino, which is worth two feet plus one if they have an active orange, which they do, and plus two if they have an active red. 
That means this dancing dino is going to give them five feet and they will use their bench warmer to get rid of that gray die. Next up, when they count up their feet, they have five plus one or six, and then they have one plus three or four buying power if they want to use it. Well, they've decided to go as fast as possible, so that will let them go one, two, three, four, five, six, and right now they can spend their four buying power to move one space closer, which does put them one space away from winning the game, and considering they don't really want to buy anything right now, they figure they may as well purchase that next step, putting them right on the edge of the finish line. They do have to spend all three of these credits to make that happen, and that has finished out their run phase. This means we can move on to the next round, which is probably going to be the last round. And when we look out at the board, unfortunately, we are really lagging behind. There are one, two, three, four red lines between us and the leader. So that does mean we will roll four extra dice. And we can see there is one red line between blue and yellow. So blue will roll one extra die. This means we get to roll 14 dice and we have four in our roll zone already. We can add four more to that, bringing us to eight, which means we can still add six more dice. So let's put these three in plus those three, and we are rolling all but one of our dice in this round. All right, I am not confident we'll be able to get to the end of the line, but we're going to make as big of a push as we can. In this case, we got quite a few faces. Although, unfortunately, we currently just have two feet. I think we did not build our die pool up to make as many feet as we needed, and I suppose that's somewhat obvious considering we are lagging very far behind. Well, at this point, I think let's roll again. And we did get another foot and a shield. We can toss that shield in there to re-roll these. And let's just see how far we can go. Well, we did get the undercover fish. That's great to see. We got another shield and another buying power. And we should probably stop there. All right, we've all finished rolling. And unfortunately, neither of our opponents busted. I was hoping to see that. I'm sure, in particular, the blue player was hoping that yellow would bust over here. Now, it is worth noting that I have seen in the past a lot more movement on this fan track than we saw in this game. Uh, I guess certain people I've played with bust more often than others. And also, there are maps with more flags that you can land on to go up the track. In addition to some of these cards, let you also go up the track as well. But either way, this is where we are at right now. Uh, we can check swords. We have two compared to the zero of both of our opponents. That means we have more than both of them, so we will gain two credits. And now it's time for the blue player to do their run phase. In this case, they have three feet and one undercover fish, which gives them two feet that can go through water. And they also have two, four, six buying power total. They'll start by moving five times, and they are going to use four of their buying power to purchase another foot. So that means they will move six times total. Up to two of those can go through water, so they can go one, two, three, four, five, and then you actually can go past the finish line if you have more movement, so they will go all the way over to this spot there, and that does give them two credits. Unfortunately for them, they cannot use these to actually gain any more feet because you only gain the benefit once you have stopped moving. Now, they don't have enough buying power to purchase any dice, and considering at least one player has crossed the finish line, that means this is probably going to be the final round of the game. Now I say probably because if multiple players have reached the finish line or go past and there is a tie for whoever is first, then we actually play through another round of the game and we keep going until there is just one player who is farthest around the track. That means the yellow player has to move at least three times in order to not tie with the blue player. And as we can see, they do indeed have three feet. They also have this catastrophe, which lets them take a die of up to three cost because they're on the third spot on the fan track. That means they could take a Muggles, even though that doesn't really help them. They could also use this Bench Warmer to knock out one of their Light Gray die. But again, that doesn't really matter when you consider they now get to move three times, which has them crossing the finish line, and then they get to move two more spaces, which puts them into a clear winning spot. That's finished their run, and we may as well do ours even though we have no hope of winning. As you can see, we have a Catastrophe, which we can use to take a Muggles because we have a three on that fan track. We can also bench warmer this away. In addition to that, we have one, two, three, four, five uh, feet, and two of them can go through water. And we also have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven buying power. So one off being able to purchase two more move, but I figure there's no reason not to purchase one more movement. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six movement total. With that, we will go one, two, three, four, five, six, and that is where we are going to end our run phase.
Well, at the end of this round, we can see that at least one player has crossed the finish line. And again, if there was currently a tie with multiple players crossing that line, we would play through another round until one player was in a clear lead. But yellow is in a clear lead, being one spot farther ahead than the blue player. So that means the game is over and yellow has won. Well, that is going to bring this tutorial to a close. I hope that you've enjoyed learning how to play Kubitos. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.